Well, hello, I'm back. Right, the reason I'm shooting this bit of video is I'm going to show you a little bit of video about the Amiga that we got here, the kind, very kind donation from Richard. Um, but what I'm going to show you is a little bit out of date. Uh, it was recorded quite a while ago, not long after the first video, and I had all in the intention of releasing that, and then I got really ill. Uh, you probably remember, or you could probably tell from the previous video, I wasn't looking my best. And then I sort of didn't feel great the week after when I recorded the next part of the video, and I actually mentioned that in the video. And then after that, I got really, really ill. And then I caught the um, the isolation virus, shall we say, because I don't like us using that word on YouTube. Uh, and I was a bit put with that for a while. And then by the time I got back to messing about with the Amiga, things sort of became slightly out of date in the video. And so you might see a couple of sections of future Dan uh, butting in and correcting a few things. Also, apologies for the strange shaky cam. I don't know what happened with the settings on my camera uh, on this other part of the video, but they seem to be a little bit wobbly or trying to focus. I'm not quite sure. Hopefully this one's not doing the same thing. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Hasdan to tell you what has been going on with this Amiga. Okay, it's a few days later. Um, you may have noticed in the previous segment, I was pretty ill, <laughs> but I wanted to obviously unbox all of this and I wanted to thank Rich as I was doing it and everything. Uh, and I didn't want to wait, but I was really poorly uh, and my voice was going. I'm still a little bit croaky, but I'm a bit better. Uh, but so yeah, I've set everything up uh, and I've had a couple of days to sort of tinker with it, and um, I've got some really good news. Now, the um, GVP um, setup, Rich was saying it wasn't working, uh, and I was messing about with it, trying to figure it out, and it was just not recognising it. It was recognising, I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous segment, but this has got also got um, 8 meg of um, RAM on it as well. So I think that's the fast RAM. I always get confused with the Amiga RAMs. So it's got eight mega fast RAM, some chips on there. Um, I'll show this in a minute. Uh, but the issue was, after watching uh, Neil's RMC uh, video on Amiga hard drives that he did last year, I think, or so, he had a problem with the switch. And then I thought, ah, oh, I'll check that. And lo and behold, it was the switch. The sw well. The switch is fine, but the um, the connections to the um, were 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 bad. I've actually misplaced my souls with that, and it's been that long since I've done anything with this sort of thing. So um, I'm going to pick up a new one, uh, and then I'll get this sorted. But the switch is fine. Uh, I checked continuity there, but the the cabling wasn't working. So as a, as a temporary measure, I've got a little jumper. And I've popped it in, and lo and behold, it will boot up. So I will show you that in action now. I'm just going to switch this over to disable the external hard drive. Because the other thing I was wondering about, it's not urgent because although it says auto boot, it, it they say, you, from what my understanding, some games or some discs are finicky with these, so you need to disable them to for them to boot uh, I've not tested many but um, I have noticed that if you if you do the auto boot thing does sort of work if there's a, a disk in obviously there or there that's supposed to boot the machine it does take priority and it will boot that first so it's good to have and I will sort it but it's um, in the meantime it's not a game changer so let me just switch this over to internal because what I want to do is I want to not enable that at the minute because I'll show you this booting up. So what I might do, let me just...
turn the center stage mode off on my camera. So I'm just going to uh, boot this up. We're going through a cheap and cheerful RGB to HDMI converter into this lovely monitor, which, by the way, is another donation. This was from Glenn, who's been donating some bits and pieces to me recently, and um, a local guy. Um, and this is lovely. I love this monitor. It's like an old style Dell um, four by three. It's got an H. Um, it's got a DVI and a VGA, so it's great for the for the for this setup because I can just go from HDMI to DVI, and it's got this little speaker bar, sound bar thing, which connects through, which is just ideal for for this sort of thing. So let's turn this on. So thanks, Glenn, for that. And you can see. Straight away, we're getting a visual. I'm just going to move the camera. Yeah, so straight away, you can see booted straight into into workbench there. You hear the drive clicking. <laughs> I'm assuming this internal drive does work too, but I've not got any disks at the minute to test it with. But workbench is there. All the usual stuff in there. The picture is amazing on this. I don't, it's, I don't know if it's a combination of, must be a combination of this monitor and the um, the RGB cable, but it looks amazing. Here we go. So there's a sysinfo. So we've got a standard Agnes 512, PAL mode, standard Denise, 68,000 CPU. Connects quick. I'll have to do more exploring on this. I'm just going to reboot into the disk mode. So I think I can just switch this over. It shouldn't. Shouldn't matter. Right. So we're going to boot into um, Amiga test kit. So yeah, the drive will work despite this being still attached and everything. So the auto boots, it seems to work. Let's look at the memory because this is the other good news. As Rich said to me that the um, expansion card stopped working. So I just gave it a little bit of a clean, just checked a few things. I did find a little bit of corrosion in, in the socket in the, on the card. In the, you know, in the pins and where the pins go, uh, and there was also a tiny little bit on one of the pins in the expansion port. And I give it a clean, and as you can see, we now have half a mega slow, half a mega chip. So, future Dan here again. <laughs> so, unfortunately, the expansion card, although I did say I got it working, isn't working again. Um, and I'm not really surprised, it's pretty corroded there's bits of corrosion on it um and the uh, the connector here on this on the uh, connector to the board there's a bit of corrosion on there possibly uh from the battery originally leaking that may have been on that probably was on here and leaked and so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to buy a replacement for this because what it, it started yellow screen in the Amiga so I, I had to pull it out so now I'm down to five ha, now I'm down to half a mega RAM again so um yeah so basically uh, I'm gonna have to uh get another one of these but you can get modern really slim ones now uh, with modern chips on and stuff that are like half the size of this and they're not expensive you know they're like 15 20 pounds so I'm gonna get one of those so yeah back to the video Let's have a look. Yeah, these things work. Mm -hmm. Great. This is absolutely amazing.
Let's see if we can boot the game up. Excellent, it's expected the expanded RAM. Good old game of lemmings. This is absolutely wonderful. Just want to see if this, how the sound, how it sounds on here with this speaker. I haven't really had a chance to test much. Forget how long things take to load <laughs> with all our modern conveniences. But there we go. I'm not sure how how that's coming through on my Lab mic. Looks great. Let's skip to the game. It's a two disc game, so we might be asked for another disc in a minute. Good old insert disc two. Press mouse button when ready. I love like this GoTech sounds like it's loaded a floppy as well. Right, one player. Let's have a, let's have a quick blast of this because this video is dragging on as already. <laughs> Just dig. Mouse button, here we go. Where's the digger? That's the digger. Sounds great. Amazing. It works a treat. I am still lost for words with this. You know, Rich, I can't believe you sent me all this. And it's amazing. I'm going to have so much fun doing stuff with this. Now, what I need is people to give me some advice and some tips because it's been a while since I've really dabbled too much with the Amiga. And I've never had this sort of setup before with a hard drive. I know we take it for granted now, but it, I'm, I'm doing a bit of research as we speak to see what I can do. Obviously, I've got the GoTech here with the, um, which I can load up with loads of games and things like that, and I can run things that way. But I may as well take advantage of this hard drive. And um, so I'd like to be able to put as much as I can onto the hard drive and then select what I want from there. And I know that certain things can be done with these Amigas that 
but some things can't. I don't think this will is powerful enough to like do WHD load and things. But a lot of games are installable manually to the hard drive, if you know what I mean. So if you've got any tips and tricks, um, I'd greatly appreciate that. So put those in the comments for me and I'll have a good read. Um, obviously, I'm going to get this fixed up and I'll probably do a little bit of retro brighten at some point. So I'm going to give it, I'm, I'm going to have a go at the old, um, this new vapor brighting technique that um, I've seen Neil and I think mainly Neil do, doing. So that looks interesting because I can keep it in here in the garage studio uh, without being in the way of anybody. Uh, and also, are there any more upgrades I should look at? In my previous Amiga that I had a few years ago, I got that Boobit uh, upgrade, which, to be fair, I didn't really get much chance to utilise much. Is something like that worth it with this? Do I upgrade the um, the Kickstart? Because it's on 1.3 um, Kickstart, which, as far as I understand, is the most possibly the most compatible for games and things, but is it worth upgrading to say 2.04, which came, I think the Amiga 600 had that, which one I actually used quite a lot of when I had a 600. Uh, and to be fair, I like the color scheme in that, better than the the um, orange and blue. It's a little bit garish for me, but I know that can be changed. But anyway, do I upgrade anything else or do I keep it as, as it is at the minute? We've got, I think the um, the the slow RAM is as high as it can get without some mods. I think there's some mods you can get it to go higher, like the Boobit uh, device to get it up to two meg. You might be able to get up to one meg. I'm not sure. Uh, and I know, I think that that will give you some extra chip RAM. I, I believe it's been a while since I looked at that. And obviously, the fast RAM is, I think, is maxed out at eight meg with this amazing device, the uh, GVP which I'll show in a second inside. But, um, you know, I'm sure 99.9% .9 of what I want to do, I can do with all this, but it would be interesting to know if there's anything I should be doing with this to make it any better or future-proof or whatever. Yeah, so it's not, it's not, sorry for the mess because the working environment, um, it's not screwed up because I've been obviously testing to see what was up what was up with it but this is this is it obviously originally this would have had a big scuzzy hard drive there that's the little jumper i've put in in place of the switch which seems to be working a treat for now there's the um, eight mega ram and this is the the zulu scuzzy which um i think it's amazing i know there are several different options you can use but this one seems to be the most user friendly because you can actually use an SD card and use virtual um, hard drives with it as opposed to actually having to create a hard drive out of the SD card, if that makes sense. Things like, I believe, the Blue SCSI and the SCSI 2 SD, which are similar devices, you have to create and use one card for, for the, um, the hard drive, whereas with this you can use an Amiga emulator like WinUAE um, to create HDA files, um, and then you can swap them about. You can add you can add multiple ones on here. I could have three, four, up to seven, I think, on there. So I could have one for workbench, one with loads of games in, one with loads of utilities. It's the, you know the possibilities are almost endless, and you don't have to mess about installing stuff via the Amiga. You can do it on a faster machine like a like a PC or a Mac or whatever. So. This is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I keep saying it, but I'm absolutely lost for words. So I will be using this quite a bit and exploring quite a bit. So the only thing left to say is, Richard, thanks so much. I think I've said it already. <laughs> uh, I know. I, I'm, I'm just, wow. I mean, I'm going to end the video because I just, I am absolutely lost for words. I'm not the most talkative person in the world anyway but um you know this has just left me absolutely speechless the the amount of goodwill and support I've, I've got since i started doing videos again has been absolutely amazing so a big shout out to everybody on the rmc discord for all your welcoming me back 
uh, and people on Twitter and um, and the YouTube comments have been absolutely lovely. So I do really appreciate it. And I've managed to get a few piece, bits and pieces back up and running since the last few months since I started trying to make a bit of an effort again. And it's amazing. So there will be more videos. There's more bits uh, and pieces going on. I think I've got th like three or four projects on the go at the minute. So if there's anything you'd like to see or you think I should do, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be enjoying these systems <laughs> off camera. So thanks, everybody. Um, this will do. There's a long video here to try and put into a, some sort of semblance of a coherent video. Uh, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Yeah, so that's where we were at. Um, so, like I said, unfortunately, we'll need to replace this. Uh, that'll be probably be the first job or so. Um, I need to find out what revision this machine is. I believe it might be a revision five, uh, which might make things a bit more complicated. I'll have to ask Rich actually what, what revision it is. That might be the easiest thing, Rich. If you if you're watching, can you pop it in the comments? Um, yeah, because the I wouldn't mind getting the um the chip ram upgraded now if it's the if i remember rightly if it's a version six i can actually do some tinkering on the motherboard uh and transfer whatever's on the card onto the chip ram so it doesn't run as slower and runs as chip ram so i can get one make chip ram and i think i'd be happy with that i'm not going to mess around uh i know i can get the adapters like that boom bit adapter which i think they don't make anymore which is a shame um and it's got like a, a thing that sits in um, one of the chip sockets, uh, which will add the extra data lines so you can get the two meg. Uh, but it pro probably don't need it for what I want to do. So there's that. And then the, the other thing, uh, since I recorded that, that's another amazing donation I've been um, given um, by Whistler from the RMC forums. Whistler, if you're watching, Thank you so much. You're so kind. He sent me uh, a pie storm. <laughs> so I've got another project. So I've got a pie storm to install in here uh, and to mess around with. Uh, and I had it. I've had this quite a while. So I'm really sorry, um, Whistler. It's been a long time getting this thank you out, but I do really appreciate it very, very much. Um, what's interesting was, well, I say interesting, it's a little bit of gutting, but I need to, uh, I only noticed recently when I took it out to have a look, that one of the pins had been bent in, in, um, in the post. And if you can, I don't know if you can see, these are so tiny, these, these little gold plated pins. And I did try to gently put it back into place, but it actually just snapped off. So I'm going to have to repair this um, and I'm going to have to um, basically get another row of these pins or a few of them or a couple of them and then just replace this one here. Not a big job. I've got the, the kit now, the soldering iron and all that to do that. And obviously I need to repair, repair this switch as well. That's still that ongoing. It's just been so busy. I've been down to the cave as well, which was amazing. And you've just probably seen the video recently of the um the computer space and i'm on that that was a quite a, a an amazing experience to play that um and really really nice it was really nice to be there um so forget that tangent for now um so yeah i've got this to do and i've also got uh, i had a, a sort of semi faulty raspberry pi 3 which i've removed the USB ports from because they were actually faulty. It wasn't they weren't working. So I took those off and I'm hoping I can use this. I think you can use this in there and um, without the USB ports as it will um then fit. So I don't have to go out and buy a um the uh, the 3A. This is a 3B obviously. If not obviously I'll have to get a 3 a 3A um I wonder if I can take this Ethernet. I think if I take that Ethernet 
sock it off, it'll probably work. It'll probably fit, but whether it works or not, that's another story. But yeah, so I'm really looking forward to trying out the uh, the Pi Storm. So that'll be a future video at some point this year. <laughs> so yeah, without I'm blathering on again as usual. So I shall finish here. Uh, everything's going well. Just got lots of things to do and not enough time. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, the usual stuff. To try and get the channel back up and running a little bit. It would be lovely to get it back into monetization. It dropped off uh, a cliff when <laughs> I was um, away, so to speak. Um, still getting a few, quite a few, well, I say quite a few. For me, quite a few views. But obviously without putting your content out, YouTube, the, the hammer went down and said, you're no longer monetized. So it would be nice to get that back. Um, but obviously, views and subscriptions are always appreciated even more. So thank you again. Uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.